Hey everyone, I hope everyone's having a nice uh, post-Thanksgiving week. This is uh, a route overview for the recently released HO Scale St. Louis line, uh, which is available on the download station as of today, which is Tuesday, November 27th. And um, it's been a while since I posted anything on the channel and really life uh, has been um, a little overwhelming. So there hasn't been much time for um, trains recording. Uh, I've been in the game a lot, working on a new project, um, and uh, failed to kind of release the uh, um, a video about the release of the Chili Sub, which is available on the download station as of uh, mid-October, and then kind of doing it right this time, and put the, putting something out to uh, put it out there about the St. Louis line being released. So what we're going to do is I've got a session that I intended to make a video for and release um, and still will uh, but we're just going to kind of use that as our it's uh, kind of our base palette for how we're going to walk through the route and um, and go from there uh, got a bunch of trains out there and uh, going to kind of step through the track plan um, operations of the line and a variety of things that uh, if you're interested in kind of operating this like the prototype, you're curious about the router, how I go about designing things uh, for your own purposes. That's really what the, the content is here today. So not as much uh, track side. So where we're starting here right now is over um, the CSX staging yard, which would be the equivalent of a Chicago staging yard for CSX trains here on the north side of, of Terre Haute, Indiana. And, um, I'm going to kind of correct some of the weather effects here and just go to a new time so it's a little easier to see everything. Uh, so like I said, we're starting here on the north side. Uh, we've got a CSX manifest train here ready to go with um, a couple of jointed rail uh, AC6000s uh, ready to take the train south and kind of right in a Terre Haute, Indiana. I'm just going to scoot over this. Uh, we've also got some... Um, Getting my directions messed up now. Eastbound, uh, Conrail trains ready to leave the staging yard, and um, uh, one is a hot auto parts train for Detroit uh, here with his LMS um, C40 AW 733, and the other is just a regular freight for uh, Avon uh, yard, which works at, at Greencastle. Um, the I like to kind of highlight content um, that I really enjoy or have picked up recently in videos um, I don't <laughs> I'm not affiliated with any of these sites I do my own thing really route creation but I picked up these uh, cloak ghost auto parts cars I've been debating it for a while they're a really nice asset um, I wish there was just one additional scheme like a Conrail quality to kind of break up uh, the standard Conrail uh, look but they're a really nice asset uh, just compared to kind of some of the standard auto parts box cars out there and I've just finally bit the bullet because of how much um, automotive uh, runs over the St. Louis line in the RI model and they were sort of a necessity because you saw these 86 foot box cars on just about every non intermodal train uh, that operated on the line just because of how much uh, auto parts business was funneled through the St. Louis Gateway and also in the Indianapolis area as a whole back in the 1990s. Um, I didn't use them in this session, but these are also Cloak Ghost Payware. These are the um, Maxi double stack cars, which I just picked up, and I'll highlight, highlight those a little more in another session. But a really nice asset, um, and they came with JB Hunt containers that are really uh, well detailed. Um, so we're heading, uh, basically, gonna, we're going to run some trains. Uh, this is not my standard video, as I typically just the train operations are typically shot more of a track side field we're just going to kind of keep it wide open so i can talk a little bit through the video i said around kind of the track plan as a whole and kind of how the route gout got to uh where it is now so um, i started it back in uh, trains 12 a number of the early videos on the route were uh from uh, the trains 12 and this was actually the first route uh, I brought into Trains of New Era. So I downloaded Coal Country from Jointed Rail just to give Trains of New Era a fresh start. Just loved some enhancements in the game and decided that this was the route I was going to bring over. 
with that meant replacing pretty much all the trees uh, as none of them were compatible. Um, I had to poe fake trees that I picked up in American Intermodal and really the entire route needed to be redone from a scenery perspective. A lot of the textures didn't import correctly and um, that just took a lot of a lot of time. So all in total, I've been at this route um, from its beginning about two and a half years, um, but I've really had to build the route twice. Uh, and I haven't really touched the track plan in about a year. And um, I guess we'll start just kind of with the track plan as we come in here over Terre Haute. Um, the Chili Sub was a track plan that was Bruce Carpenter's and was not designed uh, by me. I made some small modifications. This route was purely a custom track plan. I'd done a lot of research about the line uh, as a whole, watched a lot of videos on YouTube, um, Google as much as I could, and tried to find pictures of the operation to understand kind of what was on the trains, uh, where these trains switched. I got a con copy of the that I found online of the Conrail operating plan for the entire Conrail system, which has been really useful on a couple of my routes from back in the mid 90s and just kind of went about taking notes about how many trains run, what did they do, what did they carry, uh, to get an idea of the things I wanted to incorporate and the things I did um, about the route. And whenever possible, I try and just scale down what the actual operation looks like in the field. And that's what I really try to do here at Haley Tower, which is, in my opinion, kind of a cornerstone piece of the route. And um, what really got me turned on to the route in the first place, uh, which was an old Pentrex uh, Hotspots West video. If you, those of you are familiar with the Pentrex videos, I grew up on those uh, VHS tapes as a child. And I just loved... Haley Tower and um, for those of you kind of rail fan and, and get out and see uh, the railroad across the across the world really um, there are certain places that resonate with you and I've never visited Haley on the ground but just seeing the video and the complexity of the operation you've got a major north-south CSX line and a major east-west Conrail line crossing at grade at the time just a ton of operations and you know across this area and then you've got the piece where CSX had trackage rights over Conrail um, using this really tight connection, which in real life was incredibly tight. Uh, it was a 10 mile an hour connection. And um, in the model here, I've made it five. And it's an ugly turnout, but that was sort of done intentionally to get as close as possible to the route. So um, I've forgotten there's actually some trains <laughs> that I think are uh, out running. Um, as some uh, crossing gates are going off here, so um, not sure what's kind of going on, but uh, yeah, it looks like we've actually had a uh, timer go off on one of the trains. What I have in place here is an interlocking tower, and you can see the signals are locked up uh, by the uh, interlocking tower here, and it just acts really strangely um, when trains are in autopilot, which is the command I'm using right here. And I'm not sure why it locks up and just doesn't really clear the route like it should. Uh, but what I end up having to do as a workaround um, is actually come out of auto mode, uh, stop the train, restart it, and then eventually um, it prompts me for uh, kind of the route I want to take through the interlocking plant. In the actual route release, the session, the base session, doesn't have the interlocking tower just because I'm still messing around with some of the complexities around it. I'm just going to kind of roll violate and go through the stop signal right here. Um, but uh, just had, uh, you know, still kind of messing around with the with the interlocking towers uh, as a whole. So the session kind of may be kaput here <laughs> um, if I can manually uh, work around it. But we'll just kind of let it go manually uh, with this train here, which is um, supposed to be uh, BNST which is hot auto parts off the uh, off the BN at the time um, from Valley Park that goes to Detroit. The train kind of gets carved up at Avon, um, but there's Toledo auto parts on here, Detroit auto parts, some stuff for Avon, and uh, it was a, a pretty hot train back in the day um, when Conrail operated it in the, in the 1990s. So one of the things from a track plan perspective is I want to capture Haley and then as we head uh, east here this is the the area around Terre Haute 
like I said, I'm probably going to mispronounce that at least 12 times during the video, but one of the things I thought was really cool was in one of the industrial parks in town, there's actually this, you know, I've got a copy of the Conrail Z maps for the area as well, the ZTS maps, if you're not familiar with them, are a great source for trying to model Conrail back in the 90s. And there's actually a little diamond in the industrial park, which I thought was really cool. I wanted to incorporate that. And the track layout, while not every track is captured, I try to make it very similar to how the actual operation is. Um, and that's just something I just kind of get obsessed with how the actual operation works once I watch enough videos on YouTube. And um, same thing happened to me with Chili Sub in terms of the trains and the consists and all that, and less about the track plan. But uh, I wanted to kind of incorporate uh, Dwayne Yard, which is here the small yard, actually has a couple of small stub end tracks. And I just wanted to scale down the multiple grade crossing feel uh, that exists in Terre Haute. Because there are a ton of grade crossings. Um, and so trains that weren't cleared for Haley Tower on the Conrail side would kind of sit outside of town uh, so not to tear up everything and get nasty uh, notes from the, the mayor and uh, local politicians uh, for blocking town with trains. So um, this lead in the Duane and here in a CP Preston uh, is, is I really try to model exactly how the prototype is in terms of the switches and all the options you have uh, to kind of get in and out of town. One of the things that I haven't really covered in any videos but is a cool little operating aspect is actually this little Y and diamond here with uh, the former um, Sioux line and what it allows you to do is uh, and I've been kind of jerry-rigging this up even though it, it wasn't how the prototype was, actually bringing coal trains down um, from the Sioux line and then shoving them out uh, on the Conrail and then continuing towards Indianapolis to Indiana Power and Light uh, right there in downtown. And that's something I've just made up for um, interest purposes, but the Sioux did have a diamond here and a small interchange with Conrail back in the day. So you have the ability to do just a small interchange here with a couple cars on this interchange track or actually pull in with a train and shove back around the Y uh, here at CP Preston which is a diamond at grade between Sioux and Conrail. Um, as we head kind of further away, I want I don't cover all the industries in the line as that would be a little much, but I did want some switching to be available uh, for those of you who like kind of working industries, accumulating traffic, running trains, etc. Um, and I've labeled what those industries are supposed to be. So this is Ethel Visqueen. And I've gotten all this off, like I said, the ZTS Conrail customer service zone maps that uh, they put out on a regular basis back in the 90s. A lot of them are available online that people scan in, etc. Like I said, the abbreviation is ZTS. And uh, it's just a, a nice resource to have if you're trying to you know, model railroad that no longer exists uh, in today's world in a lot of ways. Um, so we've got Mirror Lake right here, another grade crossing, and then a big customer facility, uh, which I had a lot of trouble just trying to find the right assets for. I didn't even bother trying to swipe out these hoses that all of a sudden had weird colors uh, after I had the route for over a year. And um, just kind of left those there. Uh, but this is a big customer, AMPAS it, um, A-M-P-A-C-E-T, here off Haythorn Avenue, which is the actual road that parallels it in, uh, in real life. Um, so the entire route is double track, uh, so you can run a lot of trains. Um, this side of the line, depending on the day, saw between 20 and 30 you know, road trains a day, uh, which isn't too much for a double track territory, but it allows you kind of lots of opportunities to run trains that overtake each other, uh, that kind of meet at track speed, and I put in a couple super elevated curves that are somewhere in the 42 to 48 inch radius range for those of you who speak HO scale. Um, and this allows for just some nice shots as we change uh, scenes. The track plan as a whole is pretty linear. I do not maximize the use of the space, <laughs> uh, obviously. Um, but I wanted, when I kind of went about this route, it was the first one I did after I got into the North Jersey route, which is more or less defunct right now, and just wanted something where I could get out and run at a decent speed and the trains look right. Uh, and I, I like the model railroad concept just because uh, it was um, 
and I'm definitely going to have a problem here with some conflict trains. Uh, because it was very manageable. I built a couple prototype routes in TS-12, and after about a month, I'd made it three miles, and it was just a little ridiculous. I couldn't finish anything, it was overwhelming, and I didn't really have the time for it. And then Kimo, uh, K-I-M-O-505, one day on the screenshot thread, posted this great idea, which is, hey, you can make these assets like fascia, et cetera, or use them and basically make a model railroad. And for me, that day the game completely changed. Um, and uh, that's pretty much all I make now. Um, the uh, My next project is also model railroad, and in some cases I'm obviously using far more depth than a normal model railroad would, and especially the amount of depth away from the fascia uh, that wouldn't exist in a normal basement because of how far you have to reach and how deep the scene is. But I like for it to be a model railroad feel, but still have enough depth of field that from here you can't tell this is a model railroad. Um, and that's that's sort of the idea. Uh, so as we make the turn, this is what we call Greencastle, Indiana. Um, there's a big grain customer here and also uh, a small yard. Um, and the prototype, it's three tracks. Uh, that are pretty long, and in this case I've only done two, um, just because that's plenty. So what you have the opportunity to do here is, uh, you can have this customer take unit trains, which gradually get broken up over time, or you can come in and actually uh, have locals work out of here and switch traffic. Um, depending on the era, Conrail had trains, road trains out of St. Louis swap traffic to avoid being handled with Avon. And uh, that'll actually, that situation will be covered in the, the next session video I do uh, for the line. Um, but uh, this is Greencastle and CP39, and this is where the CSX trains will exit stage left here, back on the home rails to go to Lafayette, uh, where their trackage rights ends, kind of right here at Greencastle. Um, and we've got a dummy, you know, line that's supposed to represent the north-south CSX portion that they no longer used at the time. Uh, and then there's sweeping curve over here into an area that I really wish I could have put more time into. Uh, I had more content issues in this area than I did in any other part of the route coming over from TS-12, but I needed to kind of move on and get this out there. So this is an area that's Reno, Danville, and Fillmore. There are a number of industries through here. I actually cut one industry off and just kind of left the, the remaining switch lead uh, here. Um, but a number of industries in here. Um, this industry here takes tank cars. Uh, it's WR Grace. We have a couple uh, lumber customer um, in here, and then also uh, Shell is also a customer in here. So we've got Home Lumber and uh, Danville, and then Shell Oil, which I neglected to move the sign before I released the route, so it's just going to hang out here above the customer and then Cartersburg Road, which is the actual road that crosses kind of the middle of Danville. Um, so uh, there's a small pocket track here for a local out of Avon, which is right around the corner, be able to run around his train. Um, I spent a lot of time switching industries over in this area, and I just really needed something um, to be able to run around the train and not run uh, a double-ended local with locomotives on both ends, because um, it wasn't really... Uh, so I just wanted to kind of keep it simple with the local switching. So um, we've got CP24 here, which is number 20 crossovers and allows for trains to get lined up for Avon or get around trains at Greencastle. And uh, in the prototype, there's just a ton of tree growth here, but in that case, you couldn't really see the track, so I've kind of left that out and just put some general backdrops up. Um, we cross a small river here. Uh, which is a scene that I toyed with for a while. I still don't like how it ended up, but like I said, it was kind of time to, to move on. Um, and I really like this, this stone arch asset, which is very similar to what exists in the prototype. Uh, a big sweeping curve here, and this is one of my favorite scenes, um, which is just kind of looking across the water uh, at trains that come out from behind this small ridge and towards Avon. Um, and I don't know why, it just reminds me a lot of pictures I saw of various shots over estuaries as I was doing research on the line and trying to get a feel for what the scenery looked like. Uh, but it just, um, 
kind of something I wanted to recreate. And uh, so we head towards Avon here. This is the last uh, control point before you get to the yard. And then uh, we've got the lead into Avon. So um, for people who are kind of picky about switching operations, uh, you notice the lead is really short. If you're trying to pull uh, cut a cars out, you basically got to come on the main line. And um, I did that intentionally because in the prototype operation of Avon back in the day, uh, on this side of the yard, the um, hum jobs actually, in a lot of cases, had to come out onto one of the main lines to actually begin humping cars. And so I wanted to create that conflict where you've got stuff trying to come in the yard, out of the yard, and then you're also trying to do switching here on this back side. So it was intended to be really congested, um, and I think I've kind of accomplish that by having everything funnel through this single lead um, and uh, it's just a lot I could sp I spend hours just switching cars uh, in the yard all the tracks are labeled um, just for naming purposes uh, you can delete them if you don't want them um, and the idea is you kind of have two sets of ladders here so you've got uh, your lower set of ladders, but you've also got this upper set, so you can switch the north side of the yard uh, off kind of this outside thoroughfare lead and switch the bottom side and get a decent amount of headroom and work without really interfering with this lower ladder. Uh, I got the concept out of a uh, track planning for realistic operation book John Armstrong did and just made on a slightly bigger scale than they had in the, in the book. Um, and then I've got a couple pocket tracks here, which in this session I'm using for a pickup of intermodal equipment by one of the eastbound trains. And um, the, uh, the yard as a whole spent a lot of time track planning. Um, this is the third version of the yard, so I've torn it up twice. And then the third time um, I got with my dad who actually spent some time here uh, in his career when he worked for Conrail. And we kind of worked through a track plan one weekend when he was visiting and uh, kind of did it on the computer together, which was a lot of fun. Uh, just thinking about, you know, switching, how you want to do this, because he had built and built uh, um, his own model railroad back when um, I was a, a kid, spent time on club layouts, and his father, my grandfather, also had a model railroad. So he had a pretty good idea of how things should be laid out how to think about switching, um, and the only thing I told him was I just wanted to be big, but manageable. And I think even though Avon was a hump and we're not modeling as a hump uh, yard here, uh, we've sort of captured the scale and feel of it. Um, and uh, one of the other things that kind of drew me to Avon was this area here. Uh, I've labeled it as Indy Trail Van, which is the name of the Comrail and World Service, you know, Trail Van, TV Trains is what they call a lot of their trains and um, I just thought as I c talked about in one of the route overviews just having a small intermodal terminal at a major kind of uh, switching yard just seemed like a cool thing to incorporate so uh, we've got that here kind of off to its itself um, and then this side is uh, kind of we got the thoroughfare down here through the middle and then a high switching lead and a low switching lead and on this side these actually don't interfere at all unless you want them to um, but there's also a lot more trains that operate uh, from this side um, almost 40 a day compared to 20 or 30 on the other side uh, so there's a lot more congestion inbound and outbound trains over here um, in the in the prototype and then we've got the single main which is completely independent of the yard which is very similar to the prototype and runs around the outside and that's when I talk about some of the things there's uh, things called layout design elements, LDEs, um, that you read about in a lot of planning uh, books. And um, how I kind of use that thinking and apply it to what I try and build is, you know, what parts of the prototype am I trying to model exactly, like what feel. And so, yeah, there may be two tracks in the prototype that run around the yard, but I'm going to just capture one. Um, or you know, Avon has a hump. I'm not going to model a hump, but I'm going to model a big yard. Um, and they've got a big locomotive facility, and I'm not going to model all eight tracks they have, but I'm going to model four, and I'm going to have them tie in 
at a place that is similar to how the locomotives have the hustle in the prototype. Uh, and that's sort of how I think about it, is I take pieces of the prototype that I want to model exactly. They're pieces that I want to, you know, kind of just scale down, and pieces that I'm like, hey, I just can't model it like it was in the prototype. I don't have enough room. And um, just kind of make it functional or put, make it feel uh, like a seamless operation. Um, and this little yard is kind of a good example that I had some extra space. Uh, it doesn't necessarily exist in the prototype, but it's a place where I want to handle a lot of customer traffic uh, with a bunch of short tracks and a caboose track here uh, where these Jeeps are sitting on, on the north side of it. Um, so I've covered Avon a lot in the past, and it's probably of all the routes I've done, most I've not released because they just weren't very good when... Um, <laughs> when it came down to it, but this area in the yard at Avon is by far uh, my favorite place to do anything <laughs> in trains um, and uh, and Hopefully uh, you all will enjoy it as, as much as I have um, Before I get all misty-eyed, let's move on here uh, to MY cabin uh, Which is the East control point um, at Avon and uh, let's just kind of finish the tour here and, and head, head east. So uh, here we've got the crossovers. This is tied in a little too close um, track-wise, and I get that, but I ran out of room real fast, and it was sort of too late. So this is where that runaround main line ties back in uh, to the yard leads, and then we head east. A uh, number of warehouses over here, some small estuaries, no industries. The idea is you just kind of get out and run um, for a little bit and straight into staging behind this backdrop. Um, this Y here is CP Hunt, which I didn't model fully, only modeled partially. So this line which turns to the north heads to Lafayette, and that's just stub ends. Um, I was going to have to extend a baseboard to do something here. I didn't really want to do that, uh, so I kind of just cut it off. And then this Y here uh, was also intended to be more detailed and go to downtown Indianapolis into some industries, but once again, time and space constraints. Just, uh, well, I guess no space constraints because you can see I've got a massive grid out here, but really time constraints uh, dictated that I just make something here where you could have a lot of local traffic and, um, and be able to do what you need to do, run around a train, but have a lot of local activity in here to feed into Avon without necessarily switching all the industries and having all that built out. So um, industry yard or indie transfer, depending on how uh, um, you refer to it, was actually the name of the yard on that side of Indianapolis on the alternate main around the belt line uh, of, of South Indianapolis. And that's where a lot of industry traffic was and a lot of the auto parts traffic, etc., that was for Indianapolis actually went to and from. Um, so from a route overview standpoint, uh, like I said, just wanted to cover a lot of the industries and um, kind of talk about some of the areas and what I was thinking when I built it and all that. And hopefully um, those of you who are kind of struggling with track planning, the one thing as I've started a new route, and it's just brutal, is start somewhere. And what I found is that I've gotten caught up building a little bit of track and then when it's scenic it so it looks right and then in the end you can't run the trains anywhere and so my new round I finally kind of kicked myself in the head and said no more scenery until you're done the track work um, and so that's what I've been doing uh, on what I'm going to call the unnamed project I know what it is uh, and what it's going to be called when it models but I'm going to leave it a mystery and there'll be some videos out on that here between now and, and the Christmas holiday uh, but it's kind of a passion project, um, and uh, I'll get in that here in, in December. But like I said, just start laying track and uh, see how things come together. And the first time you make something, you're probably not going to like it, um, and that's okay. <laughs> uh, because the game um, right allows you to, to be wrong every time until the last time. So uh, like I said, this has kind of been... Uh, an area that I've never visited in person. Just kind of got hooked on it watching Pentrix videos, uh, 
found out my dad used to work out in this area of the railroad for Conroe back in the 70s and um, just kind of went went from there. So I um, hope this has been helpful for those of you who are starting a new route or, or thinking um, through some uh, kind of how to lay how to lay track and how to get started on some projects. Um, but even though this is a model railroad in the game, uh, it's still very much um, intended to feel like something that extends far beyond the basement. Um, and um, like Alan McClellan used to say on the old Virginia and Ohio, uh, want to make it feel like it extends beyond the basement. I think you know. Um, I certainly try to accomplish that here with the St. Louis line. So, uh, hope everyone enjoyed listening to me ramble. Um, didn't have a lot of train activity, unfortunately, because the interlocking tower being uh, such a mess. Uh, but we'll get started here, and um, I'll kind of reset the session, and we'll uh, we'll go run some trains.